this is Judge Judah, the show where we pit science and religion against each other in a court of law. I am your host, Judge Judah, the brother of Jesus Christ. Welcome to the show. Let's get started here. Today's plaintiff is Dr. Ken Miller, a cell biologist at Brown University and author of several high school and college textbooks on biology and evolution. The defendant is Kent Hovind, a young earth creationist who taught biology and math at Christian high schools in the 1980s. He believes everything the Bible says, even when it's f***ing impossible and contradicted by all the science and, like, the use of your own eyeballs. All right, Dr. Miller, what's your problem? You all know that evolution argues that we share a common ancestor with the great apes, the chimpanzee, the gorilla, and the orangutan. Well, if that's true, there should be genetic similarities, and in fact, there are. Oh, all right. Well, thank you very much. That was the fastest trial I've ever been. But there's something that's really interesting and has the potential, if it were true, to contradict evolutionary common ancestry. <sighs> God damn it. All right, Hovind, what's your problem? You think because they lack the centromeres that that is evidence of evolution. Maybe God designed it that way for a reason. Could that mean God did it that way 6,000 years ago when he made Adam and Eve? You, you really believe that God made a human man from a clump of dirt with a magic spell and then took one of his ribs and made another human out of that? But you cannot believe that populations of animals undergo imperceptible changes over millions of years' time? Jesus! Dr. Miller, please state your case. We have two fewer chromosomes than the other great apes. We have 46, they all have 48. I think the guys who counted the chimpanzee chromosomes probably got it right, and I'm not going to go back and recount them. That's very interesting. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, first of all, the 46 chromosomes that we have, you got 23 from mom and 23 from dad. So it's actually 23 pairs. These guys have 24 from each parent, so they have 24 pairs. So everybody in this room is missing a pair of chromosomes. Now, where did it go? I don't know, but because I have not actually counted the chromosomes on a chimpanzee, therefore I lack knowledge of biology. It's, you're insulting. So there's only two possibilities. And that is, if these guys really share a common ancestor, that ancestor either had 48 chromosomes or 46. Now, if it had 48, 24 pairs, which is probably true, because three out of four have 48 chromosomes, what must have happened is that one pair of chromosomes must have gotten fused. So we should be able to look at our genome and discover that one of our chromosomes resulted from the fusion of two primate chromosomes. So we should be able to look around our genome. And you know what? If we don't find it, evolution is wrong. We don't share a common ancestor. Oh, all right. Now this is good. If we can observe that humans have two ape chromosomes what have fused together, it proves evolution is true. And if we can't see it, it proves evolution is not true. Are you understanding all of this, Mr. Hovind? I think I have a very, very good grasp of the general concept of biology. I taught it for 15 years, high school level, and I think I could stand my own against anybody. So if, how would we find? Well, biologists in the room will know that chromosomes have nifty little markers. They have markers called centromeres, and they have cool little DNA sequences on the end called telomeres. What would happen if a pair of chromosomes got fused? All right, hold on. Let me think. A normal chromosome has one centromere, in the middle, and has telomeres at each end, right? Yep, uh, I agree, okay. Well, what would happen is the fusion would put telomeres where they don't belong in the center of the chromosome, and the resulting fused chromosome should actually have two centromeres. Well, guess what? It's chromosome number two. Our chromosome number two was formed by the fusion of two primate chromosomes because chromosome number two does not have centromeres, that is proof for evolution. You have got to be kidding. Maybe God designed it that way for a reason. Our chromosome number two was formed by the fusion of two primate chromosomes. Two primate chromosomes 
This is the paper from Nature a little more than a year ago. Look at what it says. Chromosome 2 is unique to our lineage. It emerged as a result of the head-to-head -head fusion of two chromosomes that remain separate in other primates. This may come as a shock to you. I don't care what you think. And you'll notice multiple subtelomeric duplications. The telomeres that don't belong, and lo and behold, the centromere that is inactivated corresponds to chimp chromosome 13. It's there. It's testable. It confirms the prediction of evolution. Don't even care. How would intelligent design explain this? Only one way. Don't even care. By shrugging and saying, that's the way the designer made it. Maybe God designed it that way for a reason. No reason, no rhyme. Presumably there's a designer who designed human chromosome number two to make it look as if it was formed by the fusion from a private ancestor. Could that mean God did it that way 6,000 years ago when he made Adam and Eve? I'm a Roman Catholic, I'm a theist. In, in the broadest sense, I would say I believe in a designer, but you know what? I don't believe in a deceptive one. I don't believe in one who would do this to try to fool us. And therefore, I think this is authentic, and it tells us something about our ancestry. Well, what do you have to say, Mr. Hovind? I think that Mr. Miller here has put forth a very compelling argument and has presented scientific evidence for human evolution from primate ancestors, huh? Uh, you've got to be kidding. You think because they lack the centromeres that that is evidence of evolution. Uh, I'm pretty sure he said the fused chromosome would have had two centromeres, not none. Let's assume you're right. Human chromosome number two does not have uh, telomeres or centromeres. Okay. The resulting fused chromosome should actually have two centromeres. I think I have a very, very good grasp of the general concept of biology. I taught it for 15 years, high school level. Did you know freight trains lack wings? That is proof that reptiles turn to birds. <laughs> That's the kind of logic these guys go through. Oh boy. It's there. It's testable. It confirms the prediction of evolution. Uh-huh, the court finds in favor of Dr. Miller and his use of observation, prediction, and evidence. Don't even care. Oh my god! I will go on and be happy and cheerful in life, and we got plans to do today, and your uh, comments and questions d d uh, don't hurt my feelings at all. We are done. I've been Judge Judah. Don't even care. See you next time, and don't forget... Get the f*** out of here!